Welcome to Coronet Peak, one of the most picturesque resorts in all of New Zealand. It overlooks Queenstown and the whole of the Wakatipu Basin, and that makes it the perfect venue to open the QRC Winter Games New Zealand, fueled by Forsyth Bar. Hello and welcome to this snowy peak. It's the most fitting place to kick off these winter games because we've got one of the most dynamic disciplines in all of alpine skiing. It's parallel slalom. And I'm happy to say I'm being joined tonight by one of the greatest alpine skiers of our generation, Erica Harris. Erica, you've spent more time than anyone on this mountain. What makes it so special for uh, ski racing? Yeah, look, the athletes love racing on Coronet Peak. They have really challenging different terrain and pitches on all the race runs. And being south facing, it really holds the snow well and can be injected and give, really produce the ice hard snow that athletes love racing on. It's a world class venue, isn't it? Um, but the format itself, we said it's one of the most dynamic, but it's a real crowd pleaser parallel slalom, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Like for spectators, it's a really short course. So it means that they can get up really nice and close. And the most exciting thing is that they've got the two Two athletes racing shoulder to shoulder and it really does just come down to whoever crosses the line first. Okay, so they're not up against the clock, instead they've got this real mental pressure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the athletes, I've been chatting with a few of them today and they are so excited about racing up here tonight. It's really, really fun atmosphere and for them it does add a different pressure to know that you've got an athlete right there alongside you and you can feel them and you can hear them there. Hopefully they're behind you, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know, and you're in the front. But look, I think it's just, um, it's really exciting. Okay, you spoke to a lot of the athletes, you've seen the format, how's it going to work? Yeah, so we've got eight athletes already qualified in men and women. And then earlier today, we had a qualifying, one qualifying run, which has then given us the second eight. So we've got 16 men, 16 women here tonight, knockout, racing side by side. OK, you've had a look at all of them. Who really stood out to you? We'll start with the women's side of the draw. Yeah, look, I think that this really special racer that we've got here tonight is Alice Robinson, New Zealand's top female. And she is just on fire. On the world scene this year, she won the World Junior Giant Slalom Champion, which then put herself into the World Cup Finals, finishing second behind Michaela Schifrin. OK, she is the real deal. Yeah. Uh, but then you look at the number one seed, the Canadian, Amelia Smart. There's an interesting story there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So Amelia has got... Um, she's our number one female here. But really excitingly, her younger sister, Allery, qualified in the qualification run today and is going to be racing against her sister. OK, but that's not the only sibling rivalry that we're going to see tonight. On the men's side of the draw, we've got exactly the same scenario. Yeah, yeah. So number one Slovakian skier, Adam Zampa, his younger brother, Andy, qualified first in the qualification. And I spoke to him today and he is so excited to be taking on his brother tonight. OK, that's bad news for Adam Barwood, though, isn't it? Yeah, so top New Zealand ranked racer that we've got in here tonight. He is going to be giving it everything, but he's straight up against Andy Zampa, who qualified first this morning. So, look, it's going to be really, really challenging. OK, well, you might be able to hear behind us the crowd are starting to get really warmed up for this. It's a short course, 23 gates that pit skier against skier. It's a dynamic form of alpine ski racing. Only one person goes through. That's the first person past the post. We'll have parallel slalom coming up very, very shortly. But before that, if you're new to Winter Games, this two-week festival of winter sport that takes place on the South Island, take a closer look at this. It'll bring you up to speed. Strap in, Snowsports fans. The 2019 QRC Winter Games New Zealand has arrived. And for the next 14 days, we'll be dropping the very best action from the snow and ice in Queenstown, Wanaka and Naseby. The QRC Winter Games New Zealand, fueled by Forsyth Bar, is our version of the Winter Olympics and one of the biggest winter sports events in the world. Some of the biggest nations in winter sport are here in New Zealand to take part in the 26 events which make up this year's Games. High above the Cadrona Valley, Snow Farm will play host to the cross-country ski events, with three days of racing being held in week one. 
Across the valley at Cadrona Alpine Resort, the hugely popular freestyle events will take place with snowboarders and free skiers taking to the air to contest halfpipe, slope style and big air. Over on the Queenstown side, a packed Alpine race schedule will see Coronet Peak hosting Continental Cup races in Super G, Giant Slalom and Slalom for both able-bodied and adaptive skiers. Across the Wakatipu Basin, sister resort The Remarkables will once again bear witness to some fearless free riding as snowboarders and skiers take on the Alter Shoot in the North Face Frontier. And at the other end of the extreme spectrum, the wonderful Maniatoto town of Naseby will host the Mixed Doubles Curling event with a strong field of teams from Europe, Asia, North America and closer to home. Finally, the New Zealand Ice Blacks and Australia's Mighty Roos return to the Queenstown Ice Arena for another trans-Tasman clash. This has become a popular fixture of the Winter Games, and with both New Zealand and Australia taking wins in the past, the three matches are sure to be fiercely contested encounters. 2019 sees the QRC Winter Games New Zealand reach an impressive landmark. It is now a decade since the inaugural event, but from the very beginning, the vision for the Winter Games was clear. Three main things was one, a great way to put New Zealand on the map internationally. Secondly, and most importantly, it was an opportunity for our young athletes to compete and improve at home against the world's best. And the third thing was for New Zealanders to see, have the chance to see world-class athletes. Next, we have the local boy, Finn Billis. Look, for the domestic athletes, I think it's been really important. You, know, you look at the likes of the um, Finn Billises that started off in the event as a volunteer as a nine or 10 year old, you know, taking along with mum to the event, you know, has gone all the way through to winning podiums in the last game. So uh, that's a huge part of just an, an home opportunity that wouldn't have been available otherwise. And pretty much any other of the New Zealand athletes you can talk about have competed in multiple editions of the games and so it's a significant part of their ongoing development. One of the great benefits I saw from day one is the multiplier for the region because the athletes don't come for four or five days. On average they come for at least three weeks to train beforehand and so the benefit is much wider than just attracting you know, seven or eight hundred athletes for a week. Now we've got global television coverage. Queenstown and Wanaka are showing off as what they are, great world-class facilities. The, the ultimate vision for the Winter Games, quite simply, is to be the best annual winter snow sports event in the world. We don't want to be just another event. We know we're already the biggest and best in the Southern Hemisphere, but why stop there? You know, we want to be the best in the world. Hello and welcome to Coronet Peak where, as you can see, the weather is creating a little bit of a challenge at the moment. We've got thick cloud that's rolled in as soon as the recreational skiing finished this afternoon. The cloud rolled in and we've got some snow on the course. Fresh snow on top of hard pack are the conditions at the moment, but there is enough light on there so that the competitors can see what's going on. It's a... Uh, it's challenging to say the least, isn't it, Erica? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think um, one the well one thing is the visibility. Um, the lights are going to help with that, but also it's the fresh snow that's landed on the ground. You know, underneath that they've got the really hard packed snow, which the athletes love. Um, you know, and then but the soft stuff is going to cause a few issues rutting up as the races go down. Okay, here you can see the tree for the competition: sixteen cut to eight to four, and then to two. A big final and a small final. First in Kang Yongsio is the fourth place seed. You can see the numbers next to the names there will tell you how they're seeded. Uh, the big names that we're looking out for in the second race there: Alice Robinson going up against the Polish skier Zofia Zort. Uh, then we've got Amelia Smart, the number one seed, in the middle of the pack there. So eight races to decide which eight skiers will progress into the next round. 
It all comes down to one race. Now, critically, Erica, they have a choice on the gates, don't they? Which course they race. Yeah, right. So the lowest seed is going to be able to choose which course they go in. And as, as the racing goes, it's going to become a bit obvious which course the athletes feel is going to be the fastest. OK, at the moment, the number one seed is Kang Yung Sio, and she has gone for the blue course. So as you look there on the left-hand side of the picture, you can see the gate here as well. We've got a classic motocross start gate that will flick down and release the skiers. So the start is as critical as the finish. It's a bit like the serve in tennis. You've got to get that one right. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, if you can get out of the start quick and easy, then uh, it sets you up really nicely for the run ahead. It's, well, it's one of those elements that's very, very different to our traditional alpine skiing when you start in your own time and just bash the time bar. Here, you're going to be put under starter's orders, then the gate will release. And it's more like ski cross in that sense, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for a lot of these races, they probably haven't done a lot of this format, the parallel slalom. And so for them, even the start gate is going to be something new, a little added pressure maybe to be able to actually, you know, really, really get out of that start fast. OK, so 13th seed Sakurako Mukogawa is going up against Kang Jung Sio of Korea, the number four seed. Kang did not have to qualify this morning, but she's down here as part of a huge South Korean delegation who are competing in both alpine and freestyle disciplines. So they're under starter's orders. You can see she's got a hold of the handles there, which are going to fire her out of the gate. Kang Jung Sio closest to the camera here, just making her way towards the gate. She ducks down. Now you can see the red lights are on. Green and they're out. Oh, and Kang Jung Sio gets hung up on the gate straight away. That's let the Japanese skier go. But Kang Jung Sio starting to make up ground as they fire into the middle of the course. Yeah, look, you can see the visibility there. Bit tricky for them, but it looks like at the stage. Yang Kang Yang Yang Su yeah. is in the lead. Yeah, she's got a little bit of distance oh, there. Oh, and a oh, big gosh. mistake from Sakuraka. Mukagawa, so the Japanese skier, a big mistake at the end there. Despite having taken advantage of the mistake by the Korean skier in the start gate, she couldn't capitalize on that. And the Korean skier will advance to the round of eight. So a little taste there of what Parallel Slalom has to offer and the crowd starting to pour out of the Coronet Mountain hut here and make their way up onto the course as the racing gets going. Very intimate conditions that the clouds are creating here. Now we go back up to the top and on the red course you can see Zofia Zort of Poland and then here in the blue gate it is the home favorite the crowd are going to get fired up for Alice Robinson on the blue gate and this is a real chance for her to make a statement on home snow isn't it oh look we are so excited to be able to see her race tonight and uh, and you know like it's just so cool for her to be here on this home hill okay the red lights are on green and they're out and she's had a great start Alice is such a strong skier she's gonna power through the course down here OK, so far we've seen all of the top seeds opting for the blue course. Is it going to pay off for her? She's getting great angles through the gates there. Yeah, she looks like she's really heading out in front here. And Alice is oh, a bit caught up there, but oh, she's going to have to oh! oh, That is so tight. That was a very, very close. A tiny mistake. Third gate from the end there. She ran a little bit wide. You know, it's just that's all it's going to take. It's just going to be such a tight, tight race tonight. OK, we saw the confirmation there. Zofia Zort puts out Alice. We talked about this in the pre-show, Erica. She's a giant slalom specialist. Maybe too many elements to adapt to here. Yeah, yeah, look, I think, um, you know, she is definitely a giant slalom skier at the moment. That is her preferred discipline. However, you know, I saw her ski in the um, nationals a couple of weeks ago, which is now our New Zealand national champion, giant slalom and slalom. And look, she can still, she's a great slalom skier. And I think um, she'll be disappointed not to go through to the next round tonight. Um, but uh, anyway, we've got uh, Zovia Zort is going to head through to the next round. Okay. So back up to the top, both red and blue gates are full with Lily Tomkinson and Marina Gassianica Danielle. So Tomkinson in the blue course, Gassianica on the red course. Head down, just focusing, visualizing what she needs to do here. Oh, 
the gate oh. hasn't dropped for Tomkinson. So it'll be a restart at the back of the pack. And because of the weather, the marshals won't be able to flag down Gassianica. So Tomkinson skis down alongside her, but that'll be disappointing for Gassianica. She'll feel that she's wasted a race of legs there. They've got a limited supply of power in their legs and burning it like that is not what you want to do. Yeah, it'll be, um, that'll be a really a mental challenge for both of these girls after having a g the gate not open and then, um, you know, for uh, Gassienka to have to go back around and you can see the disappointment on her face there that she's going to have to do that run again. Yep. I, well, th that's the thing, isn't it? Most alpine skiing, you're one race, you're timed, and that's your time for the day. In slalom skiing, you'll see two runs, but it's two runs. You you're training for that. You come into something like parallel slalom, you've got, if you want to make the final, four races. Yeah, absolutely. And quite often, you know, there's been also more races before this during the day in the qualifications, you know. So these girls, it definitely adds another element to the racing for them, you know, keeping their legs as fresh as possible um, for each run. Okay, you can see the Polish coach there just handing out all of the insulating wear that uh, Gasia Nika will need if she's going to stay warm and get ready for that second round, which will be raced at the end of this the women's round of 16. So when we head back up to the top, though, we've got the David and Goliath battle. They're just working on this gate here does happen when it gets really cold we saw it at the paralympics in the uh snowboard cross they had a seized gate when the temperatures dropped uh, if you remember and you watched the pyeongchang games they had temperatures in the minus 20s minus 30s on some days and the hydraulic equipment does tend to shut down and as you can see things have been getting colder and snowier up here at coronet peak fantastic skiing conditions but maybe not quite so good for hydraulic gates in racing. So the engineers are just looking at the pins there, seeing if they can free that up. It's an interesting um, format, isn't it, parallel slalom like this, because traditionally you'd actually have two runs where you race on each side of the course and split the difference after your first run. Yeah, and they'd each be timed. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but in this, in this situation, the athlete with the... Uh, the best seed gets to choose the run that they want to go in. It's it's pretty cutthroat, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, you've really, you really only got one chance, one chance to really, and you know, like we were saying before, there is some really, really amazing skiers here tonight. And one tiny little mistake, like we saw Alice make in her run, that was enough to be knocked back and knocked out. So it's, you really, really got to have a clean run down there. I tell you what, Alice may have a tiny bit of uh, an issue here because we did see she got ever so slightly hooked up on the start here. And there might be a protest, something that she can say to to basically make the point that that gate was faulty when I was in yeah. it. <laughs> well, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> 100%. Yeah. If you're racing, that's the first thing you're doing. Okay, so we're midway through the field in the women's parallel slalom. There's a round of 16, then we go into the round of eight or the quarterfinals, then it's the semifinals and the finals. It's the same for the men's side of the draw and we'll flick in between the men's and women's draws. So eight races, two people in each race now and then it'll be the same for the women's. Uh, earlier on, we saw uh, the adaptive skiers coming up to forerun the course. Uh, Corey Peters, we saw Adam Hall in there as well. We saw the guy who absolutely shut down the four star at the North Face Frontier Freeride event uh, last year. The American Patrick Holgren does his seasons at the Remarkables. Uh, and then also we had uh, Aaron Ewing. He'd been selected. Ah, there's Patrick Holgren now. Now a fantastic full face helmet. Those guys, sit skis and standing skiers taking on, let's see. Oh, yeah, there, there we, go. we go. The gate is back in action. That is great news, which means the racing is going to get back underway. Hopefully that's the end of the mechanicals for the evening. And it means that we're going to get our number one seed first glimpse of Amelia Smart, the Canadian, in the gate. And this is, as I mentioned earlier, a real David and Goliath. We've got Daria Krajewska going up against her, the 16th seed. So she's got a work cut out, but as we've seen, 
it's not all plain sailing. It's only one mistake away from a victory. Yeah, absolutely. Look, anything can happen here, and I think um, every girl up here tonight has got the opportunity to get through to that final. 100%. So, Cloud doesn't look like it's going anywhere, but it is delivering plenty of snow across New Zealand. It's been a bumper three weeks, actually. Uh, huge storms rolling off the Tasman Sea and delivering thick, thick snow to all of the resorts this winter. So, on the blue course, we're expecting to see the Canadian Amelia Smart. Yes, confirmation of that. Each of the skiers choosing their gates before they get in, and the first choice goes to the top seed, which in this case is the Canadian. Daria Krajewska on the red course. She can apply the pressure, though. Polish skier just leaning back on her arms there, pressuring the front of the ski and getting ready to smash through that gate and onto the course. We'll hear the starter's instructions. The adrenaline. This is when it really starts to surge, isn't it? Yeah, when you get that hold in the start there, it really starts playing with your mind. Uh, need to gather themselves, get them ready to shoot out of the start. Okay, there's the starter's order. Oh, oh. A great start there by Amelia, exploding out of the start. Looking very, very smooth through the first four gates. Oh, uh, we've got a straddle. Daria wow. Krajewska straddling that gate back there and pulling up straight away. Gosh, Amelia is skiing so nicely here tonight. Again, a little bit of an issue on the same gate that um, Alice did, but we've got a clean finish there by Amelia. Yeah, she, she butted ever so slightly. She butted the gate, but it gave way just as she did, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and no, I shall be very happy to be going through to the next round and she's interestingly it's the first time i've seen a ski on this course and she's one of the slightest builds a classic in the kind of kind of henrik christopherson build that very slight technical skier but you saw her hang up on the gate there yeah look she is uh she she's definitely going to be one to watch and hopefully we'll see get right through to the final and don't forget her little sister is uh still coming yeah she'll be sticking around okay. down at the bottom to watch her sister Ellery come down no doubt but to ski the way she did having made that mistake at the top tells you a lot about how much quality she's got on the snow yeah absolutely okay up in the start gate we have Carol Bissig the number two seed going up against Barbara Kantorova so the Swiss against the Slovakian Bissig started today not knowing that she was actually going to be in the race. Yes, she woke up this morning thinking she was going to have to do the qualifying run and found out that she had an automatic entry into the final and uh, she foran the qualifier today and uh, I, she, she looks awesome. She's going to be one to watch for sure. Very smooth skiing from the Swiss. The Slovakian obviously going to try and take a leaf out of Adam and Andreas Zampa's books. Yeah, doing very, very well. So a full quota of Slovakian athletes in the Alpine disciplines as well. So listening out for the starters' orders. Oh, and very smooth, but maybe a little slow from Bissig on the blue course. But look at that now. Beautiful angles through those gates. Really good separation, upper body and lower body. But a decent charge from Kantorova. The Slovakian keeping You're pace with the Swiss at the look, moment. It's really close. Oh, oh look at that, Kantorova. Oh, it was her, wasn't it, all the way? Yeah. So, was that, it'll be fascinating to see that. It was ever so slightly slow from Bissig, the Swiss, nearest to us on the blue course. And Kantorova was able to use that. Could we have lost two of the big seeds? in Alice Robinson and Carol Bissig in this first round. It is looking that way. Okay, just a tenth of a second difference between these two on the finish. Great oh. tuck from Cantor over on the finish there, but the damage had already been done. At half a meter, maybe a meter in front for Cantor over on the start, and Carol Bissig's night is over. The number two seed, very disappointed there. Not looking very happy about that. 
So the Swiss coach comes over. She looked quite stern there, I've got to say. The next two in, we have the number seven seed, Brianna Trudeau from the United States of America going up against Sabina Majerczyk of Poland. So Trudeau, another one of a big North American field here. Trudeau, the seventh seed, has the choice of the gates. Very right even start. start. Yeah. Course just starting to get a couple of rut lines there in that fresh snow. Yeah, and the visibility is not making it easy for these girls. This is a pretty tight race. I don't know, it's hard to call right now. You've Here got we go. to say, oh, oh <laughs> another photo <laughs> finish. I I wonder, we've seen all of the top seeds going for the blue course. Yeah. Is the red course faster? Well, you know what, you'd have to argue with that because I tell you what, I, you know, so far it hasn't proven that the blue course is that much faster at all. If anything, I think the blue course is maybe quicker through the middle, but we're seeing that gain come for the red course in this final pitch. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, like the last few gates, Oh, confirmation, uh, yeah. <laughs> the blue has taken it. So very, very close for Brianna Trudeau, but she advances into the quarterfinals. So a really mixed field at the moment, but... And hard to say which course is faster. Yeah. Well, we'll see in, the big test will come in the quarterfinals and the men will be watching this very, very carefully. Yeah, absolutely. They'll all have a big decision to make when it comes to their turn. Okay, so Brianna Trudeau knows that she's through some great racing so far. If you're just joining us, this is the parallel slalom from Coronet Peak to open the New Zealand Winter Games. And this is our penultimate matchup. It's Madison Lord of the States going up against Ellery Smart. Her sister has already gone through. Can the Canadian join her sibling? So Ellery on the red course, furthest away from the camera. Madison Lord powering through, but Smart has the edge. Yeah, there's this light, bit of a late line there by Madison Lord. Lovely Hi. steady scheme, but a little catch there maybe for Smart. But she's got enough daylight between her and the American to claim that victory comfortably. And both Smart sisters will race in the quarterfinals. Yeah, it's a good day for the yeah, I tell you what, I re I'm not sure about the two courses there, and I actually have a feeling that, you know, the blue course, which a lot of the lower seed are choosing, is actually running up a little bit. You know, like down that bottom half there, it's where they are getting a bit caught up on those bottom gates. Okay, so you can see Ellery Smart, the 11 seed, taking that race off the 6 seed, Madison Lord. So the two Canadian sisters going head to head, how long will it take? They would meet each. They will not meet each other until the final. If well, they both make it through. <laughs> wouldn't that be exciting? <laughs> it's a long, long way away yet, yeah. but it's still a possibility after the round of 16. So now it's the last of our round of 16 races. Kim Sohoi, the South Korean skier, goes up against Vadislava Buriva from Russia. Buriva on the red course. Kim Sohoi. Third seed is on the blue course closest to the camera here. Oh, she had a much faster start. She looks very, very tidy on her skis. Oh, she's she out. So, Bereva is gone. The Russian skier goes, and Kim Sohui gets a free run down this course, a training lap, if you like. Ooh, just a little bit off balance yeah. through that last game. It's interesting to you wonder whether she even knew that, uh, you know, that her teammate there had gone out. Yeah, the opponent the has opponent. disappeared, yeah. and uh, so he makes the universal sign language for not sure what happened there. And makes her way out of the finish area, but the third seed goes through into the quarterfinals, and that wraps up the women's round of 16. Ah. Yes, I do apologize. We will have the rerunning of Lily Tomkinson and Marina Gassianica Danielle. So those two will have made their way back up. That gate malfunction that we saw earlier on, we need to rerun that race. It'll be interesting to see whether that runs now after the women's or whether they run it again after the men's.
but you can see this cloud just starting yeah. to lift a little bit on the course. Oh, look, it'd be fantastic if this lifted right up and so the men could have a nice clean run and continue on like that for the rest of the evening. What's it, how do you think that you know this mountain, you know the way the snow behaves here and how they'll have prepped this course? We've got about three or four centimetres of fresh snow on great hard pack. Do you think the hard pack's going to stand up to it and we'll get a little bit of grip out of the fresh snow or do you think it's going to break up and rut? Oh, look, I think that's, that there's not that much fresh snow there. I really think that that's just going to get pushed off and we're going to get down to the hard pack snow and there'll be a bit of a groove in there that'll just keep developing as the night goes on. But hopefully, it's been setting up really nicely for the last few days, so it's you know, hopefully that's going to hold pretty solid and not gr not create too much of a rut that's going to really cause an issue. South Korean fans making the most of Gim so Hui at the bottom there. Uh, in terms of technique, what are the key things that you need to master for parallel slalom? Yeah, it's really interesting because um, it's it, there are a couple of different ways to do it and none of the girls have done this so far, being not as big and strong as the guys, is the double cross block which has come in. And the taller, stronger guys you will see coming up, they will hit both of the gates out of the way, which we would call a double cross block, all the way down the course. And for some, this is much faster. For others that are maybe a bit smaller, maybe quicker, just to actually go around the gate. So it's going to be really interesting to watch and see which way is actually going to be the fast way tonight. Yeah, well, the, the women weren't doing it, and only some of the men will be doing it. But it's a fantastic technique. And exa it's exactly what you said. It's are you going to go through the gate or are you going to go around it? You've got to be tall, though. Otherwise, you're blind, aren't you? Yeah, you've got to be tall. OK, so here's the replay of Tomkinson getting shut out of that gate drop. And it looks at the moment, a lot of the women gathered around at the finish area here, so they haven't been sent back up to the top quite yet by sled. So, we'll wait oh, to see. That, that light, that weather's really lifting now, giving us a really nice view of the course. And you get a full sense of scale of all 23 gates there. Okay, so it looks like we're going to rerun the women's one after the men's. Here is the event tree for the men. So Sam Mays, fourth seed, the Belgian going up against the New Zealander, Colby Derwin. Then we've got that great matchup, third one down, Adam Barwood going up against Andreas Zampa. The other Zampa by the number one seed goes up against Jung Minsik. That should be a matter of course for the big Slovakian. But then Luke Winters, one of your other picks, Erica, he, the number two seed, he could go all the way, couldn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Like he's a really tidy, nice, small, you know, skier. And uh, he did be definitely one to watch. OK, I've heard a couple of people talk about him in the same vein as Alexi Pantoro, the French technical skier, saying that he's got that same real deftness of touch on his edges. Yeah, look, it's kinda, I'm really looking forward to seeing him ski here tonight and, uh, and see how he uh, manages this you know, course, which is kind of in between a slalom and a giant slalom, probably more so towards a slalom. All the athletes out there tonight are choosing to ski on a slalom ski. OK, that tighter radius that allows them to put a quicker turn in rather than the GS ski, which is puts a, maybe makes a slightly longer arc. Yeah, exactly, exactly, for the bigger, wider open courses, carrying a lot more speed. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the little, the little slalom skis give these guys, the races here tonight, a chance to really whip around these turns quickly. OK, we talked about it a little bit in the women's racing, but in the men's it's even more poignant. We've got a big North American field, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Yeah, with the men, um, so we've got seven American, two Canadians, taking out over half of the top 16 here tonight. And there's, there are really, I mean, it's pretty clear we haven't got the big name World Cup races, but what we do have is the most exciting, most dynamic skiers of the next generation. Yeah, absolutely. Like these guys are, um, a lot of them on the Europa Cup circuit, some breaking through into the World Cup circuit, and definitely are going to be names out there that are going to be filling those podiums in the years to come. Yeah, definitely. Names. You're essentially looking in a crystal ball of alpine skiing right now that's going to feed you into the Winter Olympics in Beijing in 2022. So, first skier in the gate there, Colby Derwin. He is the number 13 seed, so he gets second choice of the gate. And again, we've seen the men doing the same thing. The, the top seed gets first choice of which course they want to be on. And Sam Mays, the Belgian, has opted for the blue course. So at the moment, it's sticking to the form we saw in the women's. Everyone thinks the blue course is faster, but I think like for like, we've seen 
the same amount of wins off the blue course as we have off the red or very similar so derby colwyn colby derwin sorry is really starting to psych himself up there guy from ratahi who grew up skiing Ruapay, who is slow out of the gate unfortunately and that's given maze a real advantage oh it could be caught back there redemption for Derwin, if he can take advantage of this real backseat skiing from Sam Mays, will the end of the red course provide the speed that we saw so often? Doesn't look like it, Mays, stretching out his lead through the last two gates. Yeah, Mays really made up time down the end there. Really nice, short little arcs around those gates. And really, you've got to give it to him. After that mistake, he nearly bounced off the tail of the skis, pushing too hard out the end of that turn, but he managed to recover and hold on. Yeah, he's been really exciting to watch, actually. He raced in the Nationals a couple of weeks ago, and, uh, you know, it's the same thing. He really puts it out on the line, you know, making these little errors, but when he can pull it off, he's fast. Okay, a 24.65 run from Sam May. So very, very quick down there. I think, for me, the thing that stood out there was perfect timing on the start gate. Yeah, it's really key. It really gives him an advantage down the course. It's sad to see um, Colby Dewin go. He was uh, he qualified this morning after being ranked 13th in the qualification and came through in fifth place. So really cool for him to be able to actually give it a go here tonight. Big step up for the Kiwi. Unfortunately, wasn't able to overhaul the fourth seed. Now, back at the top of the course, we've got Benjamin Ritchie of the USA going against Bridger Guile. So, an all-American battle. These two will have raced against each other in training many, many times, but now it's for proper bragging rights. And on the blue course, it is Ritchie out first. And you can see there, he's showing you the double cross block. Oh no, I oh, apologise, it's Guile on the blue course, and he's going through those he, gates. The two different techniques right there, side by side. First of the double cross blocks, really punching his way through, and look how much distance it made for him. Yeah, he had a really clean run there, and you just wonder with that double cross, it gives him the opportunity to get that much closer to the gate, and this time, you know, there's already been some races go down there, it means there's a bit of a rut, and being that much closer to the gate means they may even be inside that run. Okay. So 24.105, half a second quicker than Sam Mays with that double cross blocking technique. I do apologize, that was Benjamin Ritchie. So Ritchie claims the first double cross block victory here at Coronet Peak in the parallel slalom. The opening event of the Winter Games. So back up at the top, still a tiny bit of cloud left up here as Andreas Zampa, the ninth seed, goes up against Adam Barwood, the eighth seed, the two most closely matched skiers. Barwood has the blue course closest to us. Oh, a bit of a slow start there by Barwood and shot out of that start. Yeah, Zampa is well. Oh, oh Zampa sits smoke. down. Oh, there's a bit of interference. You know, though, Adam has managed to carry on. So Barwood getting a bye through this one. He's managed to hook a gate there. You can see it trailing off his arm. But Andreas Zampa, his dreams of racing his brother Adam are gone. And a uh, big cloud burst to finish there for Adam Barwood. That's fantastic to see a Kiwi go through, How huh? A real disappointment there for Andy Zampa. But it was after the expectation on Alice Robinson, there was a lot, you could sense the uh, disappointment amongst the New Zealand crowd. But Adam Barwood keeping it alive for the New Zealand fans here. Look Woo! how close they were. Very lucky to avoid a full-on collision there. Yeah, so uh, Adam Barwood, little nod there. He's managed to give himself a snow beard. <laughs> yeah, he'll be happy about going through to... Okay, back up to the top. Adam Zampa has just watched his brother crash out. He is on the blue course. Next to him is Jung Min Sik of South Korea. Start is crucial, and Zampa was away cleanly. He's already got half a gate on Jung. Oh, and Jung yeah. is out. Yeah, Early the, days. The double cross blocking was just not working for him. You can see here how uh, Adam is choosing to 
work with both techniques here? Well, it's his uh, right turn. He's got the double cross yeah. block. Sus. He's, he's, uh, he's can't throw a lure with a double cross block <laughs> at the moment. Happy to be going through to the next round. He's channeling his inner Derek Zoolander. He just can't go left at the moment. So <laughs> we're seeing an inter it's an interesting one, though, isn't it? This technique takes a lot of time to develop, but it does look like Adam Zampa critically has the height to do this. Yeah, I would say just, I think. You know, I think um, well, it'll be interesting next round where this, he really applies that technique. Yeah, do you think he saw that as a chance to uh, practice? Yeah, I do, actually. I think he realised that he is, his opponent had come out there, and I think he was... Uh, I think he's saving. He's keeping some left in the tank there for the runs to come. OK, Luke Winters, the number two seed on the blue course, going up against Pong yeah. Dongquan. So Winters... Looking very smooth and using that double cross block, just bashing his way through the gates. He let a couple go there. So Don Quan going round while Winters goes through. Well, it's pretty tight here. Uh, oh. Yeah, you, easy. <laughs> you got the sense he was cruising there, didn't he? But that could be the technique because. Obviously, if you're using the more traditional technique, you're getting low, you're creating those angles to turn. Yeah. When you're using the double cross block, you're standing up, you're, you're blind unless you try and look You've over the top. got to get right up over top of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you, you know, you're a bit closer to the gate, maybe not quite so many low angles that they're getting with the other technique. Um, so, yeah, I think he's got a lot left in the tank there by the looks of that. Yeah, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't seen everything from Adam Zampa yet. Interestingly, the first time I saw the double cross block technique being used was the enormous uh, Roman Zenhauser. I think he's six foot seven, yeah, over right. two meters tall. And he could just, he could see the whole course and was just <laughs> literally double punching anything that came at him. Yeah, yeah. But it's such an advantage. And you've got races like Ted Ligeti now campaigning for uh, discipline specific gates, so arguably lower gates here. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, look, it would change this event completely again, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, another all North American battle the Canadian versus the American. We've got Keegan Sharp up against Jet Seymour. Sharp, the seventh seed, is on the blue course next to us. Oh, another, another, uh, another mistake on that red course. Jet Seymour out of the red course, leaving a clean run for Keegan Sharp. Okay, how much of this, Erica, is to do with the course and how much of it is potentially to do with the experience and the ability to deal with the pressure by the lower seeded skiers? You know what, I think the course is actually holding up really well here and I think that it is actually comes down to the athlete and sometimes, you know, they're just really giving it a bit too much or they're just, ha you know, the nerves are getting to them or the pressure just from having an opponent beside them is, is, is really playing on them. Yeah, you cannot underestimate that. You have to remember that these guys will have trained for alpine skiing against the clock. Having that added element of someone racing next to you, neck and neck, you can hear them turning as you come down the course. It's completely different. Okay, so next in, we have another All-American battle. Jacob Dilling going up against Jimmy Krupka. So we've said it before, these guys will know each other's training styles. They'll have skied so much together and there's real bragging rights at stake between the 6th and 11th seed. Oh, and a mistake there from Jacob Dilling on the blue course. Just hold out of the start. Oh, but it hasn't affected him once he gets on course. Yeah, it's looking like Jimmy Crook has got a lovely rhythm in the red course. Oh, look. Oh, uh, and he's hooked uh, that game. Nearly pulled himself oh. offline. Oh, and only just makes it there in the end. Very, very close between the two Americans there. You but know, that might even be the first win we've had of the guys on the red course. Definitely. So 21.243, a very, very quick time you know, for I Jimmy think, Krupka. I think for Jacob Dilling there, really threw him losing that pole off. I don't really think he got into his rhythm the whole way down that course. Yeah, and Dilling, we just saw there, I'd missed that. He, he missed, missed the last he game. He did miss the last game. Yeah. So... Krupka looking very, very amped. You can see that look in his eyes. <laughs> it's that fresh off the race look. There's nothing else can give you that feeling. Okay, we're into our last matchup of the men's 16. If you're just joining us, this is Parallel Slalom at Coronet Peak, the opening event of the 2019 Winter Games. So, Radimus River 
one of America's finest young skiers going up against Dawson Hill of Canada. River on the blue course closest to us. Oh! oh! Did he straddle that? Well, you, couldn't, you know what, with that visibility, I couldn't see, but possibly. Well, etiquette says you have to step out of the course if you know you straddled. And obviously the skier does always know so. Radimus River, really under pressure oh. here. Oh, oh and he's out. Oh, what a... Incredible. Dawson, here, Dawson Hill, the 14th, 14th seed, seed, has just taken out the third seed. And there was a lot, a lot of pressure on Radimus, uh, River Radimus coming into this, wasn't there? He's got some pedigree. Yeah, you know what? And he really held it together the whole way down there, focused on his race, what he was doing, you know, not letting anything going on in the blue course affect him. Laying everything on the line. Oh, and a big stretch. River Radimus really wanted that one. Yeah, you did. You know, River Radimus, here's the, the giant slalom and Super G world junior champion. You know, so slalom, maybe not quite his thing. But he and Luke Winter are two of America's brightest young technical skiing stars. And, I mean, you, we expected to see him. I expected to see him go all the way in this discipline. But... Unfortunately for him, it's the end of the road, and the fairy tale continues for Dawson Hill. Okay, this should be the rerun of Lily Tompkinson and Marina Gassianica Danielle, the two female skiers. We saw Lily Tompkinson getting hung up on the gate in the women's round of 16. So the Australian going up against the Polish skier. So. Holy skier skied all the way through. Lily Tomkinson doesn't look too stressed there, does she? She looks pretty relaxed. Yeah, she does. You know, she's probably had a bit of a chance just to regroup herself and get us up prepared for this for this run. Okay, look at the adrenaline there. That's hey! Yannicka Danielle. Very smooth out of the start, and she's got the edge oh, at the no! moment. And Tomkinson uh... skis out. A perfect start, but she can't hold it together. So the result will stay the same. Gassianika gets yet another victory in her parents' course. Yes, she does. She's going to know that red course well. It'll be interesting to see if she gets to have a choice. OK, so that draws to a close the round of 16. Some brilliant racing there to open up the parallel slalom here at Coronet Peak, delivering very, very good conditions. Look at Gassianika Danielle. She has the look of the hawk in her eyes. She's hunting prey. And you do need a level of aggression here, don't you? I mean, we see it in standard alpine skiing, but if you can really make some noise in the gate, if you can really fire yourself up, then that gives you an advantage. Oh, absolutely. You've got to be taking everything you've got down there and getting to the finish and knowing that you've put everything into it. You know, without that, your opponent's going to be doing it. So, you know, you really, really got to give it everything. Okay, so the lights there, just bathing a soft glow over the pro-am slope. And it's slightly steeper than a lot of parallel slalom courses, isn't it, Erica? Yeah, it is a bit steeper. And, uh, but, you know, like such a fantastic showground for alpine skiing here at Coronet Peak tonight. You know, right there in front of the, the deck for everybody to watch. Okay, so here we have the skiers who advanced. Alice Robinson has made it through against Sofia Zort, so we had a penalty there. She'll go up against Kang Jungsio. Then we've got Mariana Gassianika Daniela, who you've just seen going up against the number one seed. Kanta Rova, who knocked out the number two seed. Bissi is through against Trudeau. And then it's Ellery Smart versus Gim Sohui. So the crew's discussing tactics and techniques up at the top there. There will be a lot of discussion as to whether the blue side of the course actually was faster than the red side of the course. I think in the men's there was no doubt that the men were skiing the blue faster, but in the women's I think it was quite even. Yeah it, yeah, it was. And whether you can put that down to the course or whether the races themselves were having issues, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the athletes themselves interpret that just for the next round. OK, well, we've got an interesting one as well going on with the double cross-blocking technique where you see the skiers using both fists to punch through the gate. We saw it used by Adam Zampa successfully, at least on his right turns, but not on his left. So it's... It's it's difficult, isn't it? Because no one looks really, really confident. No one looks like they're dominating the technique yet to me. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether how the course conditions change, whether that changes the technique that they choose to use as well. Um, when the when the course, because the course is going to ride up and slightly as more and more races come down it. So um, it's going to be really interesting to see which technique they adopt here. So the fans taking uh, the opportunity in the break in the racing here right now to uh, go up and enjoy the night skiing on offer at Coronet Peak. But a decent amount of crowd out here enjoying the spectacle. There you have it. Night skiing's pretty dramatic here, isn't it? You get the lights of Queenstown below you. Yeah. Wakatipu Lake. Yeah. Just reflecting up. It is uh, it is spectacular. It's Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday night, and it's a true, true locals, you know, favourite thing to come and do. Well, if you're new to the Winter Games, 26 events over the two weeks. We've got freestyle disciplines from the Cadrona Alpine Resort, that's free skiing and snowboarding, big air, slope style and half pipe. We've got cross country from Snow Farm just across the valley. We've also got the uh, curling from Naseby and then the titanic trans-Tasman clash between Australia and New Zealand in the ice hockey. So plenty to keep us busy over the next two weeks and we'll bring you live coverage from across Otago on Sky Sport as it all unfolds. Tomorrow morning we've got the Big Air World Cup from Cadrona. Qualifiers went down today. Zoe sadowski sinot made it through in the women's. The men's side, unfortunately, Carlos Garcia Knight did not make it through, but Nicolas Lefranbois, the Canadian snowboarder that very, very few people have heard of, made his introduction to the world of World Cup snowboarding by qualifying in first. All of that unfolding tomorrow. Right now, though, we have the slippers on course, just taking some of the loose snow and ruts out of the course here at Coronet Peak. And then we'll be getting the quarterfinals underway. Let's take a look at the women's, Erica. Interesting there, we saw that uh, Alice Robinson had made it through instead of Sophia Zort. Uh, what do you think happened there? Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you did mean that there may have been that hook up in the start gate may have been may have affected her run um, yeah, it'll be really interesting to find out but also extremely exciting that we have got Alice Robinson our uh, our top favorite New Zealand female here tonight having another chance yeah and then Amelia smart she showed her class didn't she obviously she was up against the 16th, 16th seed because she comes in as the first seed uh, but so she's not getting challenged there, but still, there was some really, really smooth, calm skiing from her, wasn't there? Yeah, look, I'm really excited to see her skiing uh, in this next round. She's going to be up against uh, Gazi Anika Danielle from uh, from Poland, and uh, you know, it might give her a bit more of a challenge, but um, she looked comfortable, really did. What's the strategy if you're going into this? Because a lot of times. You, you have to ski quickly, certainly at the business end of this. But right now, it seemed, certainly in the men's, you could almost ski quite conservatively and wait for an unforced error from the other side. It's a gamble. Yeah, it's a gamble. God, you know, I think, um, I don't think those guys really actually relaxed until they could not see that person in front of them. You know, they sensed, they knew that they had that in the bag. Otherwise, I don't think they'd be risking it. I wouldn't be. It's very difficult as well, isn't it? Whether you charge, because so much of this is setting up. As you're rounding one gate, you're already setting up for the next gate. You actually haven't got time to look across, have you? Not at all. No, and you know, I, I think I think that's one of that would be one of the errors that would be. You know, I think the. the Skiers that have done well down here have focused on their own race and on their own run and just given everything to what they're doing and keeping their mind focused on their course and where they are going without the distraction. And tricky, a really tricky thing to do. In that respect, that's incredible actually, because in that respect, it's actually very similar to when you're racing against the clock. Ignore what's going on around you, focus on your race. And I think, I think mentally for the athletes, that's the biggest challenge here tonight is being able to actually apply your focus that you would have in a, in a race where it is you against the clock. Put that in here today so that you really can try and forget, out the, forget about the distraction of the other racer down beside you and just focus on your run. Okay, there is the Polish coach running through tactics, potentially with Sofia Dort, maybe discussing that issue that they had and the reason why Alice Robinson has gone through. People out on the deck here at Coronet though, enjoying a little bit of apres ski and snowboard. It's uh, 
Fantastic way to wind down after a long day on the mountain. There you can see the paint guys coming through. Add a little bit of pressure to the pack on his back, and then he can draw those blue lines that give definition to the skiers as they come down the slope once the cloud sets in. So just drawing the finish line on there. He's made a bit of a mistake, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> You're not saying anything. <laughs> okay, so the quarterfinals, just eight skiers in the men's and women's. If you're joining us here at the Winter Games, this is the parallel slalom. This is the first event of the two weeks. So there you can see Kang Jungsio, the fourth seed, going up against Alice Robinson, New Zealand's most promising young alpine skier, the fifth seed. Then we've got Mariana Gassianica, Danielle going up against the number one seed. Kantarova had that big upset on Carol Bissig. She goes up against Brianna Trudeau, the young American. Then it's Ellery Smart who managed to overhaul the American Madison Lord. And then Gim Sohui who beat the Russian Bariva. So the women will be next up on the course. see that it's clear down at the bottom a little bit of cloud up at the top but you can see the pace picking up for these skiers as the course goes on just 23 gates there in terms of slalom it's all about the acceleration out of the gate and to that end there's a lot of slalom relies on the technicians, isn't it? The wax techs who prepare the skis and how how they structure the bottom and what wax they use. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the majority of the racers here tonight will have te a team of technicians behind them prepping the skis and making sure that they have got the, hopefully the right wax and edging, you know, the sharp edges for the racing. It's really important. How many of the wax techs would have been slapping their foreheads with frustration when it started snowing <laughs> yeah. half an hour before the yeah. race started? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they looked at the forecast and factored, factored that in, but uh, yeah. Is a good wax tech only as good as their weather forecaster then? Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> it's, but it's incredible, isn't it? The money that you can spend on wax, that's where Alpine skiing starts to move into the realms of Formula One because not only you need a good wax tech, but then the materials that they're using are critical. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, I think that's, ju that's just one of the elements that really makes ski racing as a New Zealander, uh, you know, really challenging because as a Kiwi ski racer, they don't have, we don't have the money and the support that the European or the Northern Hemisphere races do, where they have so much money and, and uh, support and huge teams to throw into, to throw into the likes of the technicians and the waxing and the training programs and the things. And so, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of in Austria and Switzerland, downhill skiing, slalom skiing. GS, it's the it's the same as the All Blacks and League. Yeah. They're getting that kind of investment. It's the number one sport. So there are millions poured into those programs. Yeah, absolutely. And that makes it even more exciting to see the likes of Alice Robinson's really stepping up onto the world stage and, and going, you know what? Little old New Zealand, we we can do this. And she is she is um, she is really, really creating an awesome pathway and a, an inspiration for our younger races coming through. Well, we're seeing that with uh, people like Pierre Hudson. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she has. Um, she's been racing on the scene for a little while, and uh, and is is exactly another female role model for our younger races. Okay, so we can go up to the top now, where it looks like the first of the women are pulling into the gates. So a big stamp there. So at the moment, Kang Yungsio will be the highest seed. She is a number four. Now at the moment, we've got Brianna Trudeau going up against Barbara Kantarova. So Trudeau is the higher seed and has chosen Blue Gate here. So the number seven closest to the camera is the young American. Kantarova skiing very comfortably again. Exactly what you said, Erica. She's skiing her own race. 
Yeah, she is. And look, they've really prepared the course well. That's just in perfect condition. On Canterbury. Ah, look at that. You know, <laughs> how can you say the blue course is faster after watching that? Like, well, you could say that the Russian uh, ski techs got it right tonight. <laughs> yeah. The Russian wax yeah. tech has got a very fast set of skis on the Russian. But that is not to take anything away from Kantarova. She is skiing beautifully. And you hit the nail on the head in the analysis between the runs there when you said it's about skiing your own race. And I feel that she's done that. She looked like she shut everything out and just focused on her gates. Yeah, everything moving down the hill from course to course, from run to run. So Brianna Trudeau, the young American, having beaten top seed above her in the first round. She managed to go up against Mayerchik. Now finds herself going out to the 15th seed. Barbara Kantarova, the Russian, moving in to the semi-finals. So back up to the top. Kang jung goes up against New Zealand's Alice Robinson. Can the red course work a charm for the Kiwi? jung closest to the camera here on the blue course. They're under starter's orders. And it's a great start for jung closest to the camera. Robinson under the cosh again. She needs to reel in this distance. Just 16 gates to go as they disappear down into the fog. And Robinson is reeling her in slowly but surely. She's closing that gap. jung starting to speed up. And now the... Oh, a straddle from Alice Robinson as the pitch changed there. Look, I think she just so wanted to pinch that line tight and really let it go a tight, tight run to the finish, but unfortunately pinched that gate just a little too tight. Well, she was under pressure. She could see jung just in front of her and she knew she had to risk it. Yeah, she did, yeah. So after sneaking through from that first round, and to be fair, she did very, very well in terms of outright speed to reel in this distance because it was a shocking start. Yeah, it was, and that's that's where, with Alice's strength, you know, she's so strong that she can really, really generate some speed. Okay, so Kang jung <laughs> will advance into the semi-finals. South Korean looking very, very happy, justifiably, with that performance. So now, back up at the top, we have Amelia Smart, the number one seed, going up against Mariana Gasanica, Danielle. Oh, what a fantastic start there by Amelia. Look at her, so tidy and quiet. I'd use the word quiet for her style. She is, she's calm in her arms. She's everything, only what needs to move, moves. A little bit of an ear out of that gate. Really using the power oh, of the skis. Oh. Manages to get oh. around that gate, but she gifts it to Gassianika Danielle. Unbelievable. The, per the patience from the Polish skier pays off. And she makes it into the quarterfinal, the semifinals, at the expense of the number one seed. What an upset. So we we jinxed her. <laughs> Here it is. This is what we're going to see. So she's down low, beautiful angles, just gets too far forward on the ski. Yeah, it just really caught her up. She did very, very well to stay in that course and get across the finish line, but unfortunately. Heavy, heavy commitment. She'd created some beautiful angles on her skis up to that point. You know, she's such a lovely skier to watch. I'm, I'm enamored by uh, Gassianika Danielle's effervescent celebrations at winning. She looks absolutely <laughs> over the moon. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't realize. I don't know, but, I'm yeah. pretty sure she knows. I but think I'd be, I'd be showing a bit more excitement than that, I think. Look, there, <laughs> there it is, a tiny little <laughs> smile there. But she's got high expectations. This is only the semi-finals. She's still got to get through the semis and the finals if she wants to take a win here tonight. Oh, there we go, a little bit more of a smile. But she's downplaying it so far. Mariana, tell us about the course. It sounds pretty challenging. Uh, it's pretty good. It's really nice. The, the surface is keeping well uh, until now, so it's good. And uh, I think we are having a lot of fun. It's a little bit sad that you can't see us skiing because it's pretty dark, 
but otherwise it's amazing. <laughs> Lovely to hear from the first of our athletes there. Mariana Gessianica Danielle taking out the number one seed. Now back up at the top though, it's Ellery Smart, the sister of Amelia Smart, who we've just seen go out going up against Kim Sohui. South Korean is the third seed. So a lot of work for Smart to do here on the red course. Kim Sohui looking very, very tidy. Ellery Smart disappearing into the fog there. And then very close, neck and neck here. Right. And so he makes the mistake, hooks up on again, she's down. Ellery Smart will avenge her sister and get to advance. So we will have one Smart sister in the semi finals. Yeah, looks like uh, Gim Soy here that just caught her arm in the gate. And it gives you an indication of just how fast they're traveling. Let's see that. Gets around that one. Oh, how much of this is to do with the visibility, Erica? Yeah, you know, also, I just think that these girls are giving it everything. You know, they're really, they're not leaving anything left behind. They are putting everything on the line here. And one little upset like that is enough. Congratulations, Ellery. Tell us about the visibility up there. Um, honestly, it's not as bad as you'd think when you're in the course because you've got the gates right in front of you. So it's pretty good. <laughs> your own form how are you feeling pretty good i trained a lot of panel solve in my life so it's good but there you hear it the younger sister of the two smarts has trained a lot of parallel slalom it certainly looked like it out there and yet yeah, I'd, I'd ask the question of you was the visibility an issue and ellery smart has answered for us there it's not an issue so that is the women's when we go back up to the top now we have the men's draw see the focus there men in there at the moment we've got Keegan Sharp Jimmy Krupka Dawson Hill Luke Winter Adam Zampa Adam Barwood Ben Ritchie and Sam Mays up there Adam Barwood is the New Zealand hope that we're watching he had a great run against the younger of the two Zampa brothers Andreas to claim his spot in the quarterfinals if you're just joining us, this is Coronet Pete. We've got Parallel Slalom, the opening event of the 2019 Winter Games, fueled by Forsyth Bar. And we've got Sam Mays of Belgium going up against Ben Ritchie of the US. The number four versus the number five seed. The high, the lower seed gets to put, sorry, the higher seed gets to pick the gate first. And at the moment, all of the highest seeds are choosing the blue course closest to the camera here. Oh, so that means Sam Mays, the Belgian, has chosen the blue course. Ben Ritchie, the American, is on the red course furthest from the camera. So Ritchie starting to get himself in the zone. Deep breaths. So it took slalom silver at the World Junior Championships back in Davos in 2018. Like a lot of the other guys, he's now on that World Cup development squad for the US. They have a lot to prove here. Okay, and they're off out of the gate. Very, very good start for Sam Mays, the Belgian closest to the camera and Ben Ritchie's out he's hooked himself up early lost his edge and Sam Mays it's a routine descent now as he finds his rhythm through the last few gates pops out over that pitch change oh. and into the finish area a quick look over his shoulder there to see if anyone's chasing well that answers another one of our questions from earlier on got so much focus when you've got this little visibility that you can't dare chance a glance over to the other course to see where your opponent is Sam Mays obviously couldn't hear Ben Ritchie next to him but he's stuck around at the exit of the finish area there just to commiserate with the American it's catching a few of the skiers out now there's you know a few of them are un with some unforced errors there well, it comes back to that debate again, doesn't it? Are you better off skiing conservatively? Adam Zampa, the number one seed, goes up against the number eight seed.
here but the number one seed in New Zealand, Adam Barwood. Zampa on the blue course closest to us. Adam Barwood on the red course furthest away. A couple of lovely skates there from Barwood just to give him a bit of extra speed. As they disappear into the mist, they're neck and neck. Barwood just slipping maybe a couple of meters behind now. Zampa not using that double punch technique through the gates. Oh, oh what, Adam Barwood made up a lot of time in those last few gates down there. The Kiwi giving a very, very good account of himself there. Yeah. So Adam Zampa living up to his top seed billing, but Adam Barwood doing some fantastic racing there, really trying to reel him in. Zampa just catching his breath. Oh, you can see Barwood trying to mi m just milk every ounce of speed out of every turn. You know what? I've if he hadn't made those mistakes at the top there, that would have been a really, really tight race. Congratulations, Adam. Yeah. You took out our Adam, but you're racing well tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. It's still not over. I think Adam was skiing really good the uh, bottom part. I had a good start, I think, and uh, yeah, it's a bit more turny, I think, the blue one in the end. So we're going to see how it's going to be in the next round, but for sure it's going to be so interesting. Very, very interesting comments from Adam Zampa there. Because of that pitch change, the red is a bit slower as it goes over the terrain, so they've put steeper turns in on the blue course. Yeah, you know what? And Adam's going to have the choice next round as to what course he's going to go in. So it'll be interesting whether he sticks with the blue course he knows or whether he makes that change to the red course. OK. Semi-finals are going to be the litmus test for that. So... Fog just gathering up there, but that dim glow of the lights setting enough definition on the snow. You get a, a much better picture there of what the skiers are seeing out of that start gate. There's a very strict set of instructions that come from the start marshal. He'll ask each gate if they're ready. And then he presses a light which begins the se a button at the top there, which begins the sequence to open that motocross style gate. So as opposed to a timing bar, which you get when it's a classic slalom, giant slalom, super G or downhill race, here you have the gate. And that ensures that people are let out at exactly the same time. So Luke Winter, the number two seed, is closest to us here. He goes up against Keegan Sharp. And a very good start from Winters. One of the few skiers using that double fist blocking technique to smash down the gate. And look strong doing it. Oh! oh that saved him there, I think, by adopting that and carrying on with his technique that he feels solid with, I think. So it's a much shorter distance to go yeah. through those gates rather than to go round them. And it has certainly paid off for Luke Winters. Cannot wait to see his time there. Knocks down. The number seven seed, Keegan Sharp, the Canadian. So at the moment, the US getting the better of Canada. But, so 21.5, a very, very fast time. We just heard from Luke Winters. Look at that, smashing his way through there. He had distance to spare there, Erica. Yeah, he looks pretty heavy about that, you know, and again, Okay, look, congratulations. What side of the course do you fancy? I was on the blue both both times. Yeah. Are you going to stick with that again? Yeah, I think so. It's what I'm used to. It's what I want to run. So I'm going to stick with it if I can. So Winters possibly not having the same experience as Zampa at the bottom because he's using that cross-blocking technique to barge through the gates, so he's not feeling those turns quite as much. Yeah, and I think, you know, he's right to go with what he knows. Certainly, if you've got this far and it's working for you, yeah. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, so Dawson Hill, the Canadian, the 15th seed. Oh, oh no! Oh. oh, they've taken each other out there. So, Jimmy Krupka, the American 11 seed, going up against Dawson Hill, and Krupka crashes out and smashes through Hill. 
I may be wrong here, but is it the first person who falls is the one that's knocked out? Yep. Yeah. So the mistake came from uh, Jimmy Krupka. Uh, sorry, Dawson Hill was skiing his own line. Jimmy Krupka fell first and went through him. So it is going to be Dawson Hill who goes through the 15th seed. Just staring down into the fog here. You can see the marshals and coaches are there straight away. If either of them have been hurt in any way, they'll be getting the best medical attention immediately. But at the moment, it looks like both skiers are stood up and we've just got slippers going through there. So we'll wait for confirmation on that. But usually the rules state that the first person to fall, as you said, Erica, is the one who is penalized and undoubtedly Dawson Hill had done nothing wrong there he was skiing his own line when the American came through him yeah and there was nothing he could do to get out of that way that was just came directly into his line so well looked like Jimmy Krupka came a cropper again then <laughs> as he was making his way out of the mist there so Krupka number 11 but Dawson got to say at the moment he's the uh, fairy tale isn't he the 14 he? seed yeah into so the semi-finals we've got number yeah we've got number one number two number four and 14. <laughs> so confirmation on the screen there that Dawson Hill does go through and that is a really good matchup we've got Sam Mays will go up against Adam Zampa first and fourth seed and then we've got Luke Winter going up against Dawson Hill Dawson Hill has been against an American in every single race so far and he's taken them down can he do the same with Luke Winters a big ask 14th versus second seed yeah and you know Luke Winters he's got that double blocking technique that's really doing him well so far so it's gonna be it'll be really interesting to see but it's the riskiest technique. Even he, he looks, he's definitely the most accomplished at it, but even to me, doesn't look really, really confident on that. Okay, here we go. This is the confirmation of the women's parallel slalom after the quarterfinals. We're now into the semifinals where Mariana Gassianika Danielle will face Kang Jungsio. Gassianika Danielle knocking out the number one seed, Amelia Smart. And then we've got the 15th seed, even more impressive than Dawson Hill in the men's draw. Barbara Kantarova, the Russian, goes up against the remaining Smart sister, Ellery, in the other side of the draw. We're starting to get to the business end of it uh, now, Erica, and this is where the pressure starts to step up. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I think it's, it's exciting to see some names in there that we may not have expected to see in there at this point. You know, there's been quite a few of the top seeds be knocked out and so it's um yeah it's, it is really exciting and i think like you say these girls are starting to realize that actually they have got a real chance here to get through to the final and so they their nerves might be building a bit feeling a little bit anxious and uh but you also get the rhythm don't you the more time you get to spend on your skis the more time you can kind of settle into it yeah absolutely and i think if they can hold their um their mental game and they can really just focus in on their race like like we were saying before you know if they can really channel into their run and try and block out everything else that's going on around them it's going to put them in their best best position to carry on well the one name that stands out when we're talking about that is barbara Kantarova. She, the Russian was, uh, I mean, for me, she skied her own race both times. 15 seed, she's looked fast and she's looked really, really smooth. Yeah, yeah, she has. And I think, um, you know, there's going to be no reason why she can't go out there and hold that run again. You know, she's up against the younger smart sister, Ellery, who, you know, we just heard in an interview before, she's trained a lot of this panelled slalom. So, you know, and I think Kantarova is a, you know, slightly older athlete. She is 27 years old. So whether she has, um, you know, this is like you were saying before, this, this type of alpine racing has really recently come in. Um, so whether Kantarova has had the training in the panel slalom as Ellery Smart has, we'll see. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. One of the one of the best things to reflect back on, though, from uh, Marina uh, Gassianika Danielle, she said how exciting it was up there. And there's so much when you're doing this, you can you know there's someone there. It's it's not a clock. It's not you against yourself. You know someone's doing their best to beat you. The adrenaline raises to another level. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, God, they're, good. they're going to be loving it up there. You know, there's the atmosphere of the music and the people are down on the deck. And I think um, it's again, you know, if they just need to be able to hold hold their game and focus on their own race. Um, it's going to keep them in the best position. Well, we heard from Ellery Smart as well that the visibility wasn't an issue. Certainly, you can't see a long way up the course from the base building here, but the right on the course, there is plenty of light being bathed onto that course, and that's giving enough definition. We've got the slippers on there now in between the quarterfinals and the semifinals. They'll just be re-prepping that course. The slippers come in sideways, just drag off all of the loose snow, try and fill a few of those ruts, which maybe doesn't work that well but it'll still give a nice flat course and they'll be redrawing those blue lines and red lines wherever they've been covered up yeah i think you know from the looks of it here the course looks in fantastic condition i mean we've had you know a lot of races go down this course already and um i don't think it's causing too many issues at this stage so when we go through the semi-finals, obviously we've got four people racing in the semi-finals, but we'll also have the losers racing in the small finals. So after the semi-finals, they'll all go back up to the top and we'll have the two losers from the semis. We'll battle it out for third and fourth place. And then the winners battle it out in the big final for that all important win. So opening event of the Winter Games here at Coronet Peak. And it may look a little bit cloudy, but for night skiing, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely perfect conditions here. We've got hard packed snow with a light layer of fresh snow. And now we've got the first of the women's races coming down. So Marina Gassianica, Danielle is out on the red course. And it looks like we've got the number five seed there. It's Kang Yungsio has gone out. So Marina Gassianica, Danielle gets yet another bye. This woman is blessed when it comes. Yeah. I think she's got some kind of voodoo curse on her opponents. Yeah, look, she has done a fantastic job to make it down there cleanly while her opponents really struggled so far. Well, she went up against Lily Tomkinson, who had the gate issue in the first race, yep. and then ended up getting hold. Uh, she hooked herself up. And then she went up against uh, Amelia, Smart. Amelia Smart, who fell. So at the moment, Marina Gassianica Danielle has had a lot of luck. We spoke to her last time. She's going to make her way over to this finish area now. Grab another couple of words with her. Be interesting to see, because obviously, parallel slalom is about riding your luck as much as it is technique. Congratulations into the final. <laughs> Good race tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. I have to say I was a bit also like lucky, but I tried to be really uh, focused and really doing my job like fluently and really quiet, I would say. And I did it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank Best you. of luck for the final. Thank you very much. Great to hear that from her. Obviously, exactly as she said, she's riding her luck, but she skied a quiet, calm race. And that's exactly the words we've used for Barbara Kantarova. So, Kantarova, the Slovakian. 15th seed is the first low seed we've seen on the blue course. Nearly hooking up there. So, we've seen the number 11, Ellery Smart, she knows the red course. She's been the lowest seed up until now. So she's opted to stay with the course she knows. And at the moment, a lot of work to do oh. for the 15 seed Kantarova. And Ellery Smart, with fantastic. You're right, she stayed with that red course. She knew it and she knew those last few games were gonna give her the speed that she needed to come across that line first. Well, the, the form guide said we were gonna find a, a smart sister in the finals and we have just probably not the one we expected. No. She's done it the fairy tale way. She came through qualifiers this morning. Her sister, the number one seed in this event has fallen. And instead, Ellery Smart, the number 11 seed has come through the qualifiers and has got a place in the finals. Interestingly, the, the form guide, when you look at the seeds, have said nothing about this. Ninth and 11th seeds make the final. The night just keeps getting better and better. Talk us through that race. Um, that one, the conditions are definitely getting a little rougher, so it's a little bouncier, but still really fun. <laughs> What's going to take in the final? Um, a lot more effort, a lot more charge, hopefully. <laughs> Best of luck. Thank you.
The interesting part of this race will be that both Gassianica, Danielle, and Smart have raced predominantly on the red course. So there's a good chance that Smart is going to get turfed onto the blue course, which does put her at a disadvantage. She hasn't raced that at all tonight. Yeah, you're right there. It's a very, very good chance that Gassianica, Danielle Marina, is going to choose to stay with the course she knows and stay on that red course. Uh, it's going to be, uh, yeah, a tough tougher race for Ellery. Okay, so there you can see it. The final will be Marina Gassianica Danielle going up against Ellery Smart and then we'll have Kung Kang Yuxio and Barbara Kantarova in the small final. So brilliant racing from the women's has got us to the sharp end of their race. It's now time to switch to the men's this one is going to be a very, very tight run affair. We've got Dawson Hill, the Canadian 14th seed, will go up against the second seed, Luke Winters, in the bottom half of the draw. And uh, as we said before, Dawson Hill's vanquished two Americans already. I'm sure he'll look forward to another one. And then we've got this European battle, the Belgian Sam Mays going up against Adam Zampa. Who do you fancy there? You know, I, it's really, really tricky call. I'm, I think I'm going to go with Sam Mays. You know, he's a little bit unpredictable, you know, but I think if he can make a clean run down there without losing it too much, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to put my money on him. We can go back as well to that cross-blocking technique where we see the skier going straight through the gate rather than round it. Luke Winter's the only skier adopting that. So in Mays and Zampa, we've got a very even match of traditional skiing. Yeah, and ultimately, I think um, it's going to come down to, in the final, whether we end up with Luke Winters there doing the traditional or they're doing the new cross-blocking technique versus they're, at, they're around the gates. And that's going to be the telltale as to on the day, which is faster. Well, certainly, you've got to say it's, it's swinging. The form guide's swinging in Luke Winters' favour. 14th seed Dawson Hill is, shouldn't give him too much of an issue, but... You never know, as we see, Dan Marina Daniela, um, Marina Gassianica Danielle has ridden her luck all the way through, exactly the same way that Dawson Hill has. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you just don't know what the what's going to happen to your opponent. You know, like it's that's the thing we just keep coming back to is that you just gotta focus on your own run and your own race, and just try and give it everything you can, but stay safe. <laughs> okay. You can see the skiers starting to make their way into the gate. Sam Mays, the Belgian, is in the red gate. First time in the red gate for him. Adam Zampa gets his preferred blue course. So Mays has got a fresh challenge. You can see him just sorting out his handles. You can adjust those to the height you want. So he's bringing them up a little bit just to make sure he gets that perfect pull. You don't see the skiers shifting too far back in the gate. They've almost got the skis pinned against that flap. So Zampa on the blue course. Seasoned campaigner. So you can hear the start, Marshall. Very good start from Mays on the red course, furthest from the camera. But Zampa attacking uh, these first few gates. Mays with the slight mistake there. Yeah, he just got caught in the gate and pulled him around backwards a little bit. Looks like he's making up a bit of time down here. It looks pretty close at the moment. Neck and neck, and it was Zampa who said that the blue course turns more at the bottom. He knows that he needs to get out in front of it. Oh! Maybe Zampa by a second. And he actually jumped over the little markers at the bottom there. The boys embrace a very, very worthy opponent there in Sam Mays. But certainly eyesight suggests that that was Zampa's. Let's double check it. So Zampa, beautiful technique down here, really barging through those gates. Mays giving him a brilliant run for his money, but confirmation there, Zampa out in front. So the Slovakian will advance to the final. A very, very strong night of racing from Adam Zampa. Well, Adam, into the final, anything you're going to change going into that race? Oh, I just want to ski fast. I just want to send it and uh, make my best. We will see who will be the first, but I hope the better will win today. You enjoying yourself out there, obviously. Yeah, it's amazing. I love parallels. I love this kind of shows. In the evening, I think uh, this is the future of ski racing, and uh, 
I really hope that we will have more of these races. Interesting to hear him say that. I think you've got to pick up first on the fact he loves going fast. Yeah, I think he, 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 he loves, uh, he's known for loving fast cars and, uh, you know, obviously he just wants to go fast. A speed demon. So on the other side of the draw, it's Luke Winters closest to the camera going up against Dawson Hill from Canada on the red course. And that cross-blocking technique from Winters appears to be getting the better of the Canadian at the moment. Waiting to see them come through the mist here. Dawson still with us, battling, but oh, a big mistake from Winters. Oh, oh no, another to the stake. Dawson, Dawson skied out on the other side of the course at the same time. Who made the mistake first? And was it a critical mistake for Winters? Winter, uh, no, it wasn't. Winters already got the smile there. I think Winter, Winter managed to make every gate and get across the finish line. Unfortunately, Dawson Hill made a mistake pulling him out. So let's take a look at this. There's that cross block technique, bashing the gate down. And then he misses it there, goes more. Oh, he's so lucky to recover. He really, really just managed to pull that off and stay in. Dawson Hill disqualified in a very similar way to Alice Robinson. Well, look, you set up the perfect final, 1v2. What's yeah. it going to take to get over Adam? You know, I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm just going to go. This is what I do best in, fog, rain, ruts from Mount Hood, Oregon. So, really good. Best of luck. Thanks. So, Luke Winter making the uh, comparisons to the Pacific Northwest to New Zealand. But this is what it looks like in the final round. Adam Zampa, seed number one, goes up against Luke Winters, seed number two. And then Sam Mays goes up against Dawson Hill, the 14th seed, not allowed, uh, able to ride his luck into the finals, but a big, big final set up there, Erica. Oh, look, it's so exciting to see seed one and two and the men have got to battle it out in the final. And there's a great, there's a great battle of technique as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see the, you know, traditional going around the gates and then this double cross blocking that Luke Winters has been doing. And it's, it's, it really is the old guard versus the new, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I, Luke, he's, he comes across as confident, you know, he, he likes this weather. He's having a really good run so far and I think he's really prepared to just stick to his guns and what he knows and what he's doing best and put that down in the final. I think what's also interesting, you're looking at the timings, Winters is at 21.5, his fastest run. At the moment, the fastest time I've seen from Zampa is 22.1. So Zampa is going to have to go through the gears, but there's nothing that's going to inspire you to do that like getting pushed by another person. But there's something in Zampa's favor. He'll get first choice, of course. He will, you know, and he's, he's used to racing on that blue course. So you look, I just... I can't see why he would choose to go to the red, which is going to make it a disadvantage for Luke Winters. He also knows the blue course. Okay, less turns at the bottom of that red course, but he is going to be on fresh snow. So a, a slight disadvantage for Winters, but it's set up to be an epic battle, a brilliant finale to the first event here at the QRC Winter Games New Zealand, fueled by Forsyth Bar. You can see the crowds enjoying the Ampre ski and the spectacle of Parallel Slalom up here at Coronet Peak. We're going to be in action again tomorrow on Sky TV with the World Cup Big Air from Cadrona Alpine Resort. New Zealand hopeful Zoe sadowski Sinot will be in there. She completed the Triple Crown of X Games World Championships and the US Open in the Northern Hemisphere season. Can she continue that run? into the Southern Hemisphere. We'll find out tomorrow morning when the World Cup finals get underway. Right now though, we're looking forward to the men's and women's small finals, and then the men's and women's big finals here at Coronet Peak in the parallel slalom. Dramatic racing throughout the evening. And we heard Luke Winters talking about it. This is the future of ski racing. It's so crowd friendly. Yeah, absolutely. Adam Zampa as well, you know, recognizing that this is something that the crowd loves, but the, the athletes love it. You know, like the, the energy and the, the fun that they have in this really, really makes them want more of it. You know, they want to race this kind of race. 
it adds a psychological element. Uh, we can take a look now, though, at the women's tree and, and see those advances. Alice Robinson, New Zealand's great hope, a genuine World Cup contender, especially this Northern Hemisphere winter, made it into the quarterfinals there, but had to push hard against Kang Jungsio. And then the run below that, Amelia Smart, the number one seed, going out. She was skiing beautifully, Erica. Yeah, she was, and just unfortunately had a crash, which knocked her out. Yeah, couldn't hold on to those edges. But fair play to Mariana Gassianica Daniel. She put her under pressure and forced that mistake. And that's what saw the Polish skier in to the big final against Ellery Smart. Ellery Smart coming from the other side of the draw. She beat the third seed, Kim Sohui, in the quarterfinals. And then again beat Barbara Kantarova of Slovakia in the semifinals. So almost the opposite of the men's draw where yeah. we saw that we've got seed one and two in the men's draw in the final. And then we've got the ninth and the 11th seed in the women's draw. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's just interesting. Anything can happen in this type of racing. You know, one mistake or one one error, one crash and you're out. And then, but also, you know, these girls that are in this final, they have stuck to their game plan and they have ridden out knowing what they can do, focused on their own runs and managed to get through to the final. What's really exciting about this discipline as well is that listening to Ellery Smart talk after her last race she's grown up racing parallel slalom for all of the established races it's been a case of adapting to this but we're starting to see a new generation of skiers come through who only know this and they've trained for this yeah absolutely she was really confident in her training and her background in this in this um in this type of racing and uh, you know and i think that's going to show in the final i my money's on her okay yeah we've got a big call for <laughs> ellery smart certainly that would be the fairy tale coming through from the qualifying but we did see mariana uh gassianica danielle do the same thing and Un unlike the men's side of the draw where you've got the two highest seeds those big serving clean starting men in luke winters and adam zampa but you can see the women making their way into the gate there. We're going to start with that small final, which you see Barbara Kantarova going up against Kang Jungsio. So the Korean, the top seed, who's raced the blue course all night, will be on the blue course closest to us here. And then the Slovakian, Kantarova, on the red course furthest from the camera. All the pressure comes down to now. Start Marshall begins the sequence. Very evenly started. And symmetry on the sound coming from those gates. Maybe Jungsio just pulling out a little way ahead now. But this blue course slows down at the bottom. So Cantarova can reel her back in. Very, very close. Oh! But in the end, it's Jungsio yeah. who makes it through and will take the third spot on the podium. So she will have a go on the champagne steps. Unlucky for Barbara Kantarova, she had a great night skiing. Yeah, look, she has. Uh, she's, she's really, really held her game the whole way through this. And uh, But I tell you what, Jungsi Kang, she has really proven herself here tonight, giving it everything. Yeah, very, very clean racing from the Korean. She was unlucky not to make it into the finals. But she had that mistake against Gassianika Danielle and that cost her. So you can see Cantor over there making her way down. But Kang Jung Seo, the South Korean, taking the first podium for South Korea here at the 2019 Winter Games. Very, very satisfying for her and the team. And no doubt the fans that we've seen gathering around here. No shortage of South Koreans trying to get selfies with the racers as they're coming down. Okay, back up to the top. And time for Ellery Smart and Marina Gassianica Danielle to take to the gate. And you've got to say for the ninth and the eleventh seed, the pressure is off. They've exceeded expectations by making it to the final so in theory they can relax and enjoy this race you say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah to be honest 
Because I think, it, you know, they, they, they both will, they've got this far, you know, they're through to the final. That's nothing more than they want to actually be able to walk away with the win tonight. But we're not, I suppose what it is, you're not going to see any conservative skiing here because you're guaranteed second place. Yeah, it's not absolutely. like you're going to fall away. All you're risking is a first place. Yeah, so absolutely. Why I... not roll the dice? <laughs> but that said, and we've said it all night, the most successful skiers have been the ones who've really calmed down and skied quiet races within themselves. Yeah, yeah, they have. And they've really focused on their own game and stuck with what they know. Okay, so it is the women's final coming up. Short radius slalom skis that generate a lot of speed very quickly out of small turns. 23 gates, space between 13 and 17 meters apart. Nine meters of lateral difference between the gates. And it is a steeper pitch than you traditionally see parallel slalom raced on. So it's taking all of the technical skill these racers can muster to stay on course. We've had no shortage of falls throughout the night. But it all comes down to this. Two skiers battling shoulder to shoulder down the blue and red course. The slippers just clearing all of the fresh snow off the course there. And you've got to say they've done a fantastic job here, Erica. You know what? I think the Coronet Peak race team here really, really deserve credit to the conditions that have been out here tonight and how well this course is hold up. And that, that really serves credit to them, to the preparation that has gone in days prior to this to get this slope exactly as we need it for tonight. Okay. Here is the women's parallel slalom finals at Coronet Peak. Marina Gassianica, Danielle on the red course. Ellery Smart on the blue course for the first time, and the Canadian a little slow out of the gate, taking an extra skate, and she's just a touch behind through those gates, but starting to make up speed now. Gassianika Danielle on the far side, skiing very, very beautifully, but Ellery Smart starting to reel her in now, going very nicely through these bottom gates, but Gassianika Danielle just in front as they cross the finish, and the pole who has raced ridden her luck throughout this race takes it right at the end but a race worthy of the final erica yeah absolutely look they both really really gave it everything there and really stuck to their game plan and uh you know just really like we were saying quiet fluent beautiful skiing is what's won it tonight well she started with a brilliant setup out of the gate and then here's that style you're talking about so so smooth the minimum amount of movement but Ellery Smart as well, very similar technique, both beautiful, elegant skiers. Yeah, you know, and just that tiny bit of um, weight being thrown around, putting her slightly off balance in a few spots down that run for Ellery Smart was just enough, I think, to put her into that second position. And, but that's the temptation, isn't it? When you can see someone just ahead of you, you start really amplifying your skiing, trying to milk every ounce of speed out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations, Mary, and a, a, a wonderful night. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm, I'm really happy. Thank you. What was the key to, to victory this evening? I think you have to be really smooth and take a right line to, to ski stable, or I don't know how to call it. Like, really sure, to be sure. The course itself, did it, did it change too much over the night, or, or were you happy with it throughout the evening? I think it was really good. I actually was surprised because this run I felt pretty good. There were just a little bit of tracks, but if you follow them right, then it's perfect. So you've come a long way and, and you've won tonight. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. A glowing endorsement from Marina Gassianica, Danielle. Congratulated by friends and family down at the bottom there. The pole victorious and she backed up everything you said, Erica. Yeah, she did, and what a way she's come today, you know? Like, she she made the race just by qualifying this morning. She wasn't guaranteed an entry, and uh, she is just slowly stuck to her guns, not slowly, fastly, stuck to her guns, you know, from the first thing, from the qualifier right through, step by step, to make it through to the final and be in first place now. Okay, so the ninth seed has overturned the form guide and taken the win here in the women's final of the parallel slalom at Coronet Peak. And you can see how much it means to her. She was very, very, uh, 
I'd say she was she had a poker face on for the first couple of wins. She didn't let too much go. Yeah, she did. She's been playing that the whole way. Okay, back up to the top now for the small final in the men's. Sam Mays, the Belgian, closest to the camera here on the blue course, goes up against Dawson Hill, the Canadian on the red course. And that timing on the start from Sam Mays, immaculate again. Really crucial, and again, he's on the blue course, the course he knows, the one he's been racing all night. But also, Dawson Hill has been on the red, so they're both on their home courses, but Dawson oh. Hill, high-sided out of that gate, chucked onto his hip. But he wanted that so badly, he knew he had to push it. Look, he was giving it everything, he had nothing to lose there. Yeah, he was already, he knew he was just that metre behind on the gate. You can hear it, because as each of these guys hits the gate, if the sound is coming at the same time as your gate, then you know you're level. But the moment you hear that gate slap a little bit ahead of you, you know they're getting the distance. So Dawson Hill rolling the dice, really starting to drive into those turns. And he risked it all, and unfortunately there was no reward for him. So... Sam Mays will take third place. Let's take a look at this. Great technique from both of them. Yeah, look, he just got it chucked out of that gate inside, which just threw so much energy out of that turn and it flipped him up. Yeah, diving all of his weight onto the front of that ski. Yeah. Sorry. Sam, third place here at the Winter Games. You must be stoked. Yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, I mean, this is such a fun event, and yeah, what else to say? I mean, it's a great evening, amazing crowd, love it. So the Belgian man from a flatland takes a podium spot here at the New Zealand Winter Games. But back up to the top now. This is the men's parallel slalom final, and we have the seed at number one, Adam Zampa. Going up against Luke Winters, the second seed. And this is big news because Zampa, no, Zampa has stayed on the blue gate. And it's the American Luke Winters for the first time on the red gate. So Zampa, a little bit slower out of the start. But you can see the two different techniques. The double cross block from Winters. No, he's foregone the cross block and he's skiing traditionally. He didn't have enough confidence. Wait a second, it's back now. So neck and neck as they come over the last Just roll. Oh! And it's the double cross blocking technique of Luke Winters down the second half of that course that takes the win for the second seed. The American vindicated in his use of that technique at the bottom there. Adam Zampa nearly crashing into him through the finish there. Fantastic performance from both men there. A very, very worthy race of the final again in both the men's and women's. Zampa a little bit slower out of the start there. Yeah, you know, and that red course down the bottom there of the last few runs, you know, it really showed that they were just he was able to let them run and go for it. And then you can see that cross blocking technique that Winters used through the bottom there he's just able to go through the gates instead of around them interestingly Zampa trying to use it on that right hand at the end there well look you took out the man in the number one but how does that feel it feels good you know we came from Ohio we're training here for three weeks to get our race legs back under us and take the first one of the season you pretty much said before that these conditions feel like home was that the key to tonight you know I always say if there's moisture on the lenses, count me in. So I think tonight was a good night for me, and these conditions for sure helped. 0.15 of a second, the difference in that final. It couldn't have been any tighter. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the first time I ran the red course. Uh, I did a little different tactic. Knew we were close. We were close all the way. I could see him and reached the finish line and got the win. And the cash, too. Congratulations. Cash, too. Yeah, it's always good. Great to hear 
from Luke Winters there that he, he was on a fresh course. That makes that win even more impressive for me. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? He just uh, did what he had to do to get down there. You're seeing that he did adopt, you know, let, let go of the double cross block when he needed to, to adapt to the different course. And But, you know, I think what it was is that last few gates in that red course where he double cross blocked that and he just took such a straight line and he really, really gained the speed down the bottom there. Well, we'd heard Zampa say already that there's the turns are more aggressive on the blue course at the bottom. So Zampa using the double cross block technique on a course that was a little bit more direct means that he, he really had an advantage. It was almost like a slingshot through the back. Yeah, look, it was so exciting to watch. Really, really neck and neck right down to the end there. What a fantastic event to open the QRC Winter Games New Zealand fueled by Forsyth Bar. A brilliant start. And the weather just adding to the drama here. We've had cloud, a little bit of fresh snow. And as Luke Winters said there, if there's moisture on the lens, then he's doing well. And I don't think there's a Kiwi who'd disagree with him. Uh, he, interestingly, he said there that he's been training up at Ohau for the last couple of weeks. And they do have a brilliant... Uh, Alpine preparation system. They've got a great piece that they use for training. It's a really, really popular place for the international teams in their off season to come and train and do training camps there. They can get some really, real good quality runs. Well, we can take a look back now at a replay of the women's final where we saw Ellery Smart closest to the camera going up against Marina Gassianica Danielle. And Smart and Gassianica both skiing so, so smoothly. But Gassianica's start just gave her that little bit of an edge. Beautiful angles from Gassianica, Danielle. She talked about skiing quietly. She was able to gain just, it was less than a meter over the line. There. Yeah, a really tight race between those girls. And she was just, I loved seeing that nice, quiet, fluent technique that she'd spoken about. And she stuck with that the whole way through and it paid off. Okay, this was the men's race. Zampa closest to us in the blue, going up against Luke Winters. Now, it's a traditional race at this stage, both of them going around the gate. But as he comes over the pitch change here, you can see there Luke Winters starting to punch that gate out of the way. And instead of going round them, he's going through them. Boom. 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 Those red gates getting absolutely punished. And that was essentially the difference between them. Just a metre and a half between Zampa Metre and a half actually equated, as we heard there, to 15 hundredths of a second, Erica. Minute time, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely nothing between them. So, strong performance for the Americans, the Canadians, the Poles, and the Slovakians. And uh, who was it who came through in the men's small final? There's Dawson, oh no, Sam Mays in the end, I think. The Belgians, uh, an unusual flag to see on an Alpine ski racing podium, but the Belgians skied in a very similar vein to Gassianica Daniel very, very smoothly tonight. And no doubt that the fans here at Coronet have been entertained. Decent bit of après ski with some fantastic entertainment in the shape of world-class parallel slalom. So the program will continue tomorrow on Sky Sports with the Big Air World Cup in snowboarding from Cadrona Alpine Resort. The great New Zealand hope there. Zoe sadowski Sinot, fourth place in qualifying today. So she's made the finals very comfortably. Certainly didn't see her best. We're looking forward to seeing that tomorrow. One of the biggest jumps in the Southern Hemisphere on offer there. You can see the marshals pulling up the gates here. So if you fancy coming up to Coronet tomorrow, and testing yourself on this Pro-Am piece, then you can. One of the steeper pieces, and it's race prepared. Yeah, nice and hard, just how the race is like it. Look, the conditions have held up. They held up so well tonight for this parallel slalom. Well, it's a testament to the New Zealand Southern Alps. We've had fantastic snowstorms over the last three weeks. Every weekend there's been fresh snow delivered and it's coming again now, but that is the opposite of what the preparation teams want when it comes to a race piece. You want to be able to cut up this snow and actually water it down and get it to freeze top to bottom so you don't have a thin crust on it that these racers can break through. 
when you have big, powerful racers, the amount of pressure they can apply to their edges. If you've only got two or three inches of crust, then they'll break that up remarkably quickly. And then you get some serious rut lines and quite dangerous soft snow underneath getting revealed. But a great night for all of the teams that have made the trip down to the Southern Hemisphere to start testing themselves. You can see them gathered up at the bottom here. It's the US team. They've got the Europa Cup teams and their World Cup hopefuls down here. And as you said before, Erica, we're going to see these names. These are the big names that we're going to see contesting future Olympics and World Cups. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think these guys will definitely have the next Olympics in their line of sight. And um, and these are just all stepping stones towards that. And, you know, the breaking through onto the World Cup. And, and these are definitely going to be the names to look out for. Well, there's talk of parallel slalom making it into the Olympics. Now, that would be exciting. Well, for when you've got all of the big events up on the hill, this one is one of the events that you can draw down into the city and bring in, like the ice hockey, uh, to the city fans. Yeah, and it really puts Alpine, um, you know, in, in the vision of of the spectators, you know, so that they can really actually see what it's about. And, and uh, um, you know, it's just a really exciting way to watch it. And I think for a lot of people that don't get out to see um, the other Alpine events, the Slalom, the Giant Slalom, Super G, which are quite often, like you say, further out on the field, not necessarily coming right into the base town. This is this is so neat to see for to have available for spectators to be out there to watch. I've been to these in Oslo, Stockholm, and Moscow. And in Moscow, it pulled 60,000 fans. Yeah, wow. In Oslo and Stockholm, you're doing regularly over 25, 30,000 people. So you can imagine what it would be like in Beijing, one of the world's most popular cities. So very shortly, we're going to be bringing you the trophy ceremonies and the prize giving down the bottom of Coronet Peak. But right now, just starting to take this piece down because it will be open to any of the recreational skiers and snowboarders who make their way up here tomorrow. So this is the women's podium. Kang Jung Sio, the fourth seed, made it into third position. She had an unfortunate semi-final. But she was able to redeem herself in the small final. And then the younger of the two Smart sisters, Ellery Smart, makes it into second place. Being presented there by Taylor Rapley. And then tonight's winner, she rode her luck, but it's fair to say she also skied with an enormous amount of skill and composure. It's Marina Gassianika Danielle. Congratulating Kang and Smart. She takes her place up on the podium here. The first people to grace the podium at the Winter Games NZ. Big smiles all round for the women. This is the perfect warm-up for the winter season because off the back of the New Zealand season, all of these women will be going back into the Northern Hemisphere, training at some of the glacial resorts in October before the World Cup starts at the end of October, start of November. Yeah, exactly. So this is this is their off season. And so I like, you know, one of them saying that they're really enjoying getting their race leagues back after having some time off after the Northern Her Hemisphere season. And, uh, you know, I'm really enjoying the chance to have a race down here in New Zealand before heading the full-on World Cup season in, in October. And what's fascinating about the Winter Games, and I'll say this time and time again, is that people are doing well down here will carry that confidence into the Northern Hemisphere season. If you look through any discipline, any of the results, you'll see really strong performances from the people who are working hard and gaining the results down here. Yeah, right, so it's really proving to be a great preparation for the Northern Hemisphere. 100%, 100%. So the Polish national anthem rings out around the base building and the deck here at Coronet. You can see how much it means to her. She hasn't let an awful lot out in terms of emotion tonight. She was very, very careful in both the 16 and quarterfinals not to get too excited. But Marina Gassianika, Danielle.
enjoying the plaudits here tonight. as well. There you go. Well done. Fantastic podium for Marina Gassianica, Daniel, and beautifully, they've each got a little bit of greenstone, some Ponamu to take home and remember New Zealand by as part of those medals. Very, very special occasion for each of them. So $6,000, $3,300, and $2,000. A very tidy night's work for each of these women tonight. And as much as those checks mean something, it's just another milestone on the way to international success which the road is very, very long. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing that they'll take away from tonight is that they had such a fantastic time doing it. They had so much fun out here and enjoyed racing this type of ski racing. We heard that from each of them in the interviews. That was the first thing they said, wasn't it? It's so exciting. Yeah, I hopefully we'll see more and more of these parallel asylums in the calendar. Okay. Now it's the turn of the men. So Grant Robinson presenting the medals down in the base building here. In front of the assembled crowd. So Sam Mays, the Belgian, so enjoyed his racing tonight. Beautiful style out there. Really, really tidy skiing. Adam Zampa, the number one seed in second place. Great night of racing from him. But he was bested in the final by the American Luke Winters. Man who plies his trade on Mount Hood in Oregon. Has some of the harshest weather of the probably all of North America. I was going to say the United States, but it's probably fair to say all of the United States. That volcano drags in all of the bad weather surrounding it. But Luke Winters, that Double cross blocking technique working so, so hard for him tonight at the Winter Games at New Zealand parallel slalom. In the American, you can see how much that first place means to him. But equally to Sam Mays in third and Adam Zampa in second. Grant Robinson handing out the prizes. And the Greenstone medals. So a fantastic night of competition here on Coronet Peak. Perfect conditions on the snow, if not in the air. But that was reflected in the racing. So dramatic racing in one of the most dynamic of all the Alpine disciplines, parallel slalom. The Winter Games have officially been opened here in the Wakatipu Basin, and they will continue for the next two weeks. Please come and join us.